Here, we're going to do a problem that focuses on dilutions and laboratory procedure. You can find more AP Chem resources right here. Okay, this is a long one. The laboratory stockroom contains a liter of one molar ammonia solution. A student requires 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar ammonia solution for a lab. What is the proper procedure for preparing this dilution? You might want to pause the video for a second and read through all of the different answer choices. To answer this question, you'll need to do two things. First, you have to successfully figure out how much stock solution to dilute. Then, you need to identify the best procedure for this process. So, let's start with the math. The equation for making a dilution is M1 times V1 equals M2 times V2. M1 and V1 are the stock solution, molarity and volume, and M2 and V2 are the dilution, molarity and volume. Now, this equation isn't given to you on the AP equation sheet, so it's a good idea to have it memorized going in. And honestly, you're going to use it over and over in all of your chemistry classes moving forward. So, usually, when using the dilution equation, you're solving for V1, which is how much of this stock solution you need to dilute. It's always a good idea to write down your knowns and unknowns for dilution problems because it's really easy to confuse which variable is which. Okay, so we have M1 equals one molar, V1 is our unknown, M2 here equals 0.1 molar, and V2 is 100 milliliters. Now, we're going to rearrange this equation to solve for V1. There it is. Dividing both sides by M1 gives us M2 times V2 divided by M1. Now, we can plug in our knowns. Molar cancels molar, leaving you with units of milliliters. So we know that we set the math up correctly. And the math is pretty easy. You don't even need a calculator. 0.1 times 100, just shift the decimal pl place over 1 to the left, that gives us 10, and 10 divided by 1 is just 10. And remember the units are milliliters. So, now that we've calculated V1, let's make some space here, we'll just move this over there, and now comes a part where we have to understand correct lab procedure, particularly correct lab procedure for making a dilution. This is something that so many students confuse, even if they know how to do the math correctly. So pay attention here. This is the most common mistake that's going to happen, okay? V1 represents the volume, the amount of the stock solution that you have to dilute with distilled water to reach this final end volume. Okay, so we're starting with 10 milliliters of stock solution. We add 90 milliliters and we end up, 90 milliliters of water, and we end up with this final volume. But many, many times, okay, students think that V2 is the amount of distilled water that you add to V1. So many students think that. It's wrong. V2 is the total final volume that you have at the end. So it is V1 plus the amount that you add gives you V2. This is super important. So, look at these two answer choices, okay? They are perfectly engineered to trick students who make that mistake we talked about earlier, okay? In both of these, the student is taking the amount of V1, 10 milliliters, and adding it to 100 milliliters, which is V2, right? That's what happens here and it's what happens here. This is a little bit more complicated, but it's the same thing. It's 10 milliliters added to V2, 100 milliliters. Those are both wrong. The final volume isn't 110, it's 100. So, bam, bam, you can cross those off. We've narrowed down half the answer choices already 
just being aware of this very common mistake. Okay, that leaves us with these two problems, or these two answer choices that have the correct math. Both of these, if you read them through, dilute 10 milliliters of stock solution with distilled water to reach a final volume of 100 milliliters. So, the important thing between C and D is the difference in, in equipment and procedure. Okay, let's look through these. In C, we measure the stock first with a graduated cylinder and then put it in a volumetric flask, then add up to the 100 milliliter mark with distilled water. This is the proper best practice way to make a solution. Volumetric flasks are the preferred and correct glassware to use. Choice D, as we said, has the correct math, but the procedure is a disaster, okay? They're using beakers and reusing graduated cylinders and adding the chemicals out of order. It's just, it's a total mess. So, this is wrong, even though it has the correct math, and choice C is the correct answer. See how for this question, we needed to know both the dilution equation and how to use it, and then how to take this information and apply it to correct lab procedure. Often questions on the AP test cover two or more concepts at the same time. So you always wanna keep that in mind. You have to think step by step by step through all the parts of a question. 